summer for seasons change we still keep it together hey beverly hills 90210 fans are you ready to dive deep episode by episode Storyline by storyline, character by character, as we break down the making of your favorite zip code with your host, <laughs> Charles <laughs> Rose. Did I say that? Yeah. Harry oh, Mullen. This heinous thing about the, the, the real person. And we're going, what? We're getting rid of this guy. Pete Ferrero. I'm feeling wonderful. <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> looks crush, TV crush worthy. Like so many special guests. And all your questions. Live on the Beverly Hills 90210 Show. Oh, yeah. And we're going to dance now. Well, here we are back live again. It's been a minute since the three of us have been together. Uh, it's good to see both you, Chuck, and Larry. Charles, how are things going? You're in a different location. It's an alternate universe for you. Yeah, today, uh, out, out of the man cave, out of the... Uh, the basement, and instead here in Marina Del Rey, just down the alley from Larry. Chuck. Hi, Larry. <laughs> uh, where we bring been since September, but this is the outside area. Behind that door is our bedroom. Wow. And, uh, that's where Karen is uh, in, in there uh, and, and wanted me to stay close to the burning fires. And so we'll be here for another uh, month, hopefully a little longer. We'll have to see. Going to be a big, big move, and here and there, still got a lot of work to do. Mm. But uh, the beaches, I just was out there, Larry, and I walked up past your place, knew that you'd be preparing for the show, and and the beach was absolutely empty. And we went yeah. all the way to the low tide. Mm. Dogs didn't get wet. That's a myth. Yeah. And, I spent uh, some time over there. That beach is incredible, Larry. You have a beautiful beach outside uh, of your, your yeah. property. Uh, it was not too windy, Chuck? I went down the other side of the lagoon uh, Quite beautiful. to walk the dog before yeah. the show. In the early afternoon, I think, yes. But but by the end of the day, not mm, so much. Good. But when I was walking with the dogs, I had one thought that I wanted to frame relative to talking about Steve and romance. Okay. Right? Because you really have to start with the character of Steve and the notion of, of where he was in the 90210 pecking order. And that he was an auxiliary character. The point was this was going to be a Walsh family show. You established the Walsh family and their friends. And um, and in that, uh, his, his deal was less than some of the other performers. Really? Mm. Yes, he was not every episode produced because the spelling, it was a low budget sure. production yeah. and he's, and, and we had to spend our time and resources building up the Walsh's, so it was thought. So what we, as we three discussed in, in, in prepping for the show uh, the other day, is that, you know, he, he was sexual. That was the one thing. And he had sex with, with Kelly Taylor. I mean, this was that's all that was established in the, in the pilot. He was rich. He had a Corvette. It was, you know, he was a north, of, as I later would refer to him, as a north of Sunset homeboy. Ooh. And, like and, North uh, and, he, and he was very, his essence was Beverly Hills. And he reminded me a lot of a, a friends of mine who mostly were the grade above me, the class of 1969. Yeah. I was a class of 70. A couple, Chuck, couple of guys you know, like, there was a word for that. He, he was an but, ass man. He was, you know, he was, a, he was a cool guy. He was, a yeah, player. and he was, he was showbiz. He was showbiz. There was, there was, he was north of sunset. He had, had all of those elements. But, his character was solidified on the show with his romance, i.e. bromance, with Brandon totally. in Slumber Party. That's when he really became a character. Dar Darren did him a, a mitzvah, as, as we say on Saturday mornings. Um, and it's, it's and that to give him that depth of a relationship because he was, he was flotsam. And then it was like, yeah, no, these guys are buddies and this is... You know the Beverly Hills guy, and 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 I think at that point I think Steve slash Ian was locked in. He could carry story. Yeah, I have a lot of clips right. of the early early days of the pilot. Why don't we jump right, Larry? Do you have a thought on anything that you just heard, or what your origins of Steve was sort of later well, on? Well, I, I liked hearing that whole thing because again, you know, he he was a peripheral character who you know became you know 
integral part of the show. But and so his quick his quick read was he was a player. He was the ass man on campus. He had been he had been there, the Beverly Hills guy. When I when I came in, in in season four, I remember Chuck saying to me, "We I was walking out of his office. I had the job, but he said to me, we have to make the world safe for immaturity." <laughs> Do you remember this at all, Chuck? Oh yeah, but I really was heartened by that because I said I can do that. <laughs> Helping to make the keep the world. And Steve, the and Steve yes, Sanders was, was the prime, you know, the prime recipient of that. Of and that he philosophy. was the one. Yes, we we talk about Steve Wasserman on this show a bunch. Were was Steve Sanders? Were there things that came out of Steve Wasserman that were Steve Sanders oriented? Well, the show business thing, because because uh, Was. Wasserman kind of always fancied himself as knowing the music business and knowing this and that. And so he he projected a kind of Hollywood uh, patina. Yeah, so, Porsche. He had a Porsche. You know, and, I, and Steve Sanders had that. Yeah. Um, uh, the scamming part of it. Yeah, we, well, we all got off on that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's <laughs> just the point. You have a scammer yeah. in your midst. Uh, and especially with and – I, and I have to own a lot of that. But that's we're talking romance today. Not yeah, romance. totally. Yeah, yeah. that's have to have the other show, the scams of C Sanders. That's right. But oh, that rom- would be fun. So yeah, romance. Uh, I'm not even going to ask because I'm not familiar, but I know that uh, he hit on some girls in the first couple of seasons. But it, as far as I can tell, it was basically about Kelly Taylor. Well, let's look at that from the pilot. There's two scenes I want to show you. Um, it's the inter. This is the pilot. So this goes. We're going really going into the wayback machine here. <laughs> Predates me. Even That's with right. My name on it. This this footage you're gonna see where I was. It's, nowhere it's so in interesting too because it's so it looks so different than everything that we know about 90210. So it doesn't even look like the same show in a lot of ways. But this is uh, this is a couple of scenes. Hi. You want to dance? No, thanks. I'm fine right here. Oh, come on! Everybody's dancing. What do you want from me? I said I don't want to dance. You are so cold, you know that? Get over it, Steve. No, get over yourself. <laughs> You're really strong. Yeah. 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 All right, there we have that. And then this is Steve talking to David about that. You know her? Yeah, I know her. She's hot. She is the biggest bitch at West Beverly High. I should know. I went out with her for a year. Well, what happened? I dumped her. She's lousy in bed. She's got a nasty personality. I could live with that. Who are you? Oh, uh, David Silver. Steve Sanders. Uh, I love it. She's lousy in bed. Is that, did I hear right there? <laughs> Is that what he said? He did say that. Wow. And I, I have to say that that would have been, you know, this was shot, this was done. That one would have probably not passed the rose and smell test. That I wouldn't have wanted to lay that on the character of Steve. That somehow he was a judge about who was good in bed and not good in bed for the yeah, actual I mean, sex I mean, act. There were times that Larry probably will confirm this. Pete, hmm. you can ask this. This is usually an air, a Larry kissing kind of question. Sure, always. But you would know, you know, that song, you know, well, is it in his arm? No, it's in his kiss. You know, some makeouts were just duds. There was nothing you anyone could do to to pep it up to get anyone interested in it. So, you know. Well, but I will say though, Chuck, in defense of the writing of this thing, that um, when you're watching this show as a kid and you have never seen anyone say she's a real bitch, like you know, that is. Oh, I shock- like that. I'm just yeah. talking about the line about the bed. I know, but all of it sort of plays into. I'm going to be watching a totally different kind of show right now you yeah, know what i mean he's like theoretically a sophomore in high school at this point exactly yeah uh, so you know 16 years old at the most is it fun for you larry to look back on some of these old old have you ever watched the pilot of beverly hills 90210 as a research yes. assignment yeah yes at one point i did uh but i still am not i don't know what that did you well, fast forward through that larry, did you fast forward through because it's a very long-winded pilot i don't know if you're aware i don't, I don't <laughs> you know, I can't remember all right uh li- look me I'm going to skip ahead. There's definitely the the rich girl that he sees for a hot minute, but I thought going to what Chuck was talking about is important here. This is a moment with Steve where I think he becomes a character on the show. 
I want to drive it. What? Your car. I want to drive it. Sure, anytime. Um, I want to drive it now. No. Come on! Oh, do the color. What are you, what are you doing? What's my dad going to say about this? He's telling the truth. <laughs> he might ever let me live this one down. What, what if people at school find out? I'm going to be totally humiliated. You, you got to swear. You got to swear you're not going to tell anybody about this. Scout's on <laughs> So there you have a really, really... That's the first uh, yeah. really emotional bond right there. Julie, Julie McCullough. Is the oh, girl, my God. Right? Julie McCullough. Love Julie. She was in a pilot with me. I, she was a doll. Yeah, really. Love, hope she's doing well. I don't know. She's a comedian now, but she looked so great back then. Do you know that she was in, you know, about all the trouble she caused on Growing Pains? Well, she didn't cause problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, she was uh, so sexual. It was she, too much for the other girl. She uh, was in Playboy and... Kurt Cameron had her shut down from the yeah, the, yeah. the show once once he found out that's a no no and yeah, yeah. so beautiful the first Playboy I brought we talked we talked about that at some point Larry uh, Chuck <laughs> yeah was just to see Julie McCullough uh, so first fact. so first season did he have a relationship with anyone other than this other than the Kelly Taylor. No. The, the Kelly Taylor is the thing, and they have a blowout at the end of the season at Spring Dance. I'm about oh, to show you. He does share a kiss with Andrea Zuckerman. He does? Yes, he does. Well, you got to try. It's a Episode numbers game. Five. It's a numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Andrea, what happens? Andrea, she doesn't. Uh, it's a tight That's kiss. not going to happen. No. Yeah. It wasn't. It just, it just occurred. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. We'll have to look at that. We've never really looked at higher education. No, we have not. It's one of the ones we've never do dove into. All right, let's do that one before we do the, the crap ass. Okay. Uh, Chuck, what about this season with Steve and Kelly? I mean, you got, you, you've always said you were trying, you were figuring it all out in the season, but was there thoughts like this should be a relationship? We'll get them back together. Never, was any, never. None of that was ever happening? Never. never. It was just the, the, the love that he lost. It was his That's crush. Right. It's yeah. going to be, or, or that there's that she that he can't have, or that he talks about. But we weren't thinking of using him in in that way. We again, it was all about look at the episodes, yeah. look what they're about. They're all focused on Brandon or Brenda, Brandon and Brenda, and that's that's what the show was—a wall show. So both of them, it, it, Kelly got to break through a Perfect Mom as as a big one focused on her. But really, the big focus is with, um, with, uh, with Steve as character was when he went back to search for his birth mother. Right. But, the, but the, first, the first romance then is, is really Celeste. Is that really the, the first I, relationship? Yeah, I, the first long-term girlfriend is, is Celeste, than, uh, according uh, to this. But let's look at some of the fun ones. Here's a big conversation him and Kelly have at Spring Dance. Yeah, that's what I remember really well, that one. Oh, yeah? Your mom spends half her life in detox, the other half her life unconscious. Shut up. And I've never even met the man who you claim is your father, although I suppose it doesn't matter too much as long as the checks keep coming in on time. Why are you trying to ruin my night? I'm not trying to ruin your night. I just get so angry when all you had to do was say one word. Just one word to let me know you cared about me. I do care about you, Steve. I said I'm sorry. I don't know what else I can do. I don't know. I'm sorry, too. I don't know why I said these things. Because deep inside you're just a jerk, that's why. So, Ooh, but it, even that's a burn. That's a pretty much. A, it's a burn, but I mean, <laughs> but like, even though you're not considering bringing them back, it's heavy stuff that's going on with them to the fallout of their. Well, that's, that's spring dance. Yeah, 
So that's, that's the very end of season one. It's still being explored. You know, at the end of that season, that it's not happening. It's not getting back together. He's being a jerk. So it is something that is in. It is something that's in Steve's well, love interests. Yes, absolutely. Because you start the season, you start the pilot off. They he already kind of has has have been intimate with her. Now in the end, he really wants back in. And she doesn't, he wants to at least to know that she cared about him. For, for all the time, he was make, making it look like he didn't give a shit. Uh, it was cool. And then season two, he had some... Uh, There's a lot of other uh, stuff happening here. Let's see. There's this incident. When a girl dresses like a slut. You really don't have a clue, do you, pal? Punches out a guy that attempt to attack uh, Kelly. I did not show the clip where he, she, she got attacked because he wasn't there for that. But um, so he's still always coming to Kelly's aid. Yes, well, you keep that a lot. There was nothing more we needed to do with it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's all we and had. It to gets do good. Just, you know, keep it, that floated in the background, and that it's important, and he would. You know, go to battle for her, what? Oh, yeah, that, you could that. always bring it out too, because we have that thing when we get to season five, where you know Brandon now is secretly with Kelly, and Steve he doesn't know. Hawaii he knows and tells Brandon that I, 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 with the exactly. love of my life is Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Here's some fun stuff. Here's here's some fun, Steve. All right, stud mania out of control. Well, guess who else met a girl today? You. Earthquake material. Won't be contagious. Ah, I hope not. I'm going out with her tonight. <laughs> you were fast. Well, I've got to. She's only going to be in L.A. for a week. Mine too. She's going back to Florida. See you visiting your aunt Betty in Brentwood. Is that the girl you asked out? Yeah. Me too. No. Yes, Steve. Now settle, Brandon. I met her first, Steve. It's customary in America for women to have some sort of say over who they're going to go out with, is it not? Fine. She's yours. You go out with her. Steve, what's your problem? Brandon, I'm not going to compete with you over a girl. I know what she's going to say. I've been down that road before. She's going to say... Hey, Steve. How you doing? See you in a couple of hours. this be twins <laughs> minnesota no less the minnesota twins yeah uh but he really you know of course steve gets himself into all kinds of trouble because he thinks he swaps the girls i've wanted to do that since i first saw you hey didn't you say the same thing to rory the night you took her to the crab house no no rory and i had nothing going on She's a good sport. She's boring. You think so? Yeah. She's not nearly as hot or sexy as you are. Let's do it. Let's go for it. I'm not Claire, you dumb guy. I'm Rory. <laughs> what did you think of the kiss there, Larry? That was good. Very, you know, I, I was working it. You know, I'm happy with it. Uh, I, you know, I, it was good. Yeah, I thought that was... Using it as a building block. Yeah. yeah. No, again, you know, you know but that's funny. Yeah, that's uh, that's my cop. You know, I didn't do that. Get to do too much comedy on the. I was going to say so that's, that's why he was there. You know, and some the, laughs, and that's exactly. And he was that. That's why I saw him as, as that he would be able to be that for us, and also was just really true to the Beverly Hills ambiance. Mm. You know, he looked and felt Beverly Hills. Very important. Uh, Brian R. Marmanda, our friend, says, I always felt Steve stayed consistent in his actings through yeah, all he, seasons he in some growth. shape or form. That's very <laughs> true. Uh, Catherine West has pointed out that is Leanna and Monica Creel, who yeah, we just love here. Cool. Monica is so sweet and kind, and I still stay in touch with her. Very cool person. Um, let's see if anybody else. Oh, Lisa says, by the way, I read Larry's new book. It's so good. I highly recommend it. 
Sweet. <laughs> yeah, Larry, what new oh, book is this? Book. Is this the book well, that you... Yes, this is the Pool Guys Kid. It's just um, I've got some wonderful beta readers out there um, like Lisa trying to get a perspective on my next move on it. But yeah, it's finished and sounding is pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yay. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa. Um, okay, let's yeah, go. I mean, the thing about Steve, though, when, when you think about it, I mean, his character is pretty consistent. I mean, he showed, you know, his vulnerability or whatever, but, you know, I mean, luckily for us, at least in the, in the all the way through college, he really didn't really ever learn his lessons, ever. I mean, like, no. he continued. When that was part of the charm of the character, perhaps maybe after uh, college, uh, where he kind of had to settle down and become more mature, maybe the character became uh, uh, less Steve. Just when you think that Steve has can't top it, he always finds a way to top it. I mean, you kept that theme going, uh, Larry. Let's see. Here is where he meets uh, Celeste. Uh, this is not the whole game show, but this, I think, is, this, is the important conversation after the whole um thing he wants to get to the party they're outside and they get out of the limo and they have this chat i've never seen anyone finish dinner so quickly i told you i'd get you here are you sure you won't come in with me no they're your friends thanks Celeste, for everything go on maybe you can get in there before kelly blows out her candles can i call you you better. Yeah, that was the right kiss, by the way. Very good. I love that. Yeah, scene. that was nice. I was wondering who directed that episode. Can we find mm -hmm. out real quick? Yeah, we can. Yeah. You know what's, what's good is that Steve got his own good. He got the romantic score there. That was the first time he probably what he had. Romantic That's right. That score. was a milestone right there. Not not, that, not comedic score. He had romantic score. Meanwhile, oh, he, out, he out got it over Brandon. Because yeah. you know she had the choice of which to take. That's right. Wow. Well, that, that is interesting, though, Chuck. To something I wanted to bring up. There is a competitive nature between the two characters that Brandon and Steve are sometimes interested in the same girl. They talk like I mean, even the girl that we've the 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 racist character that we we've had on the show here. Like, there's even a little play there. There's a play with the twins that we just saw. So the choice to finally let Celeste, Steve be the one picked it had to happen at some point, right? Absolutely, and you then you know move that plot forward, and we did. Yeah, and, yeah. And they, they were wonderful together. Really, really nice. Yeah, and we've had her here. You can look that up in the archives and see what that was all about. All right, let's see. It does, of course. You know, Steve's ways always come up in, into play. Oh, you know Steve, Mr. Congeniality. Yeah. Listen, Celeste, if you're gonna keep getting jealous, Steve's gonna drive you crazy. You know how he is. Good stuff. Good, right stuff. Good, good, good spike there. Good spike there by her too. There, you know, we didn't write it again, Larry, and I and I bet we weren't appreciated to use that, or there was a limit on how much we could use the pool. Yeah, that was I need to college. tell you that I don't know that you ever used the pool again, but it is I, the it probably was a limit. A great set. My yeah. God, it was so cool, and like I just wanted to go hang. Like it feels like you're there, and you want to go hang out with everybody. You know, right. I mean, so that is the pool at. So, see you, no, yeah, Occident yeah, Occidental. Yeah, yeah. Just, and see, I mean, Steve, you know, there he is in the pool. He's got his face uh, up against her upper body pride. I mean, it's just, you know, again, he can't help himself. And uh, that was the cool stuff. That was a good the player that you were talking about. That's him with Brooks East there, who's the, you know, he's well, flirting around. And so it's you're setting up essentially that Steve is not going, and Celeste is not going to be a, a long term thing. But he stays with Celeste for, for some time through this series, the, you know, yeah, but we just don't through see through it. The, we don't see the relationship all the time. We hear about it. No, it comes well, back at the end of the well, season. But yeah, but here we are in, in the same season. I mean, now we're in season four and the whole um, thing with the, uh, with the other, with the actress. Oh, Laura Kingman. Well, I'm going to get to that I, now. 
Yeah. yeah, but that's so that's uh, not that long after this. It's right after it. So let's take a look and see what I pulled here. I'm sorry about all the phone calls. I just kept thinking about you. That's no big deal, really. Didn't you think about me a little bit, too? Yeah, and Laura, I have something I need to tell you. Oh, something good, I hope. <laughs> Laura, I have a girlfriend. Kelly would be saying how tonight she closes the deal. She was giving me the vibe all through dinner. Man, why don't you cut her a break? Is that all you think about? Yeah, I know you used to have a thing for her, Sanders, but come on, she's into me now. Well, of course. But does she know about that bunch of girls you have on the side? Oh, like uh, you told Celeste about, uh, what's her name? Love Bunny? No, I didn't. But I did tell Laura about Celeste, and believe me, it would have been an education for both of you to see how hurt she was. Oh, I get it. You hurt Laura, so I shouldn't sleep with Kelly. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Seriously, this is not a game. People do get bruised, you know. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Sensei. Oh, fabulous. First of all, can I just say, I, I know Tracy Mittendorf does oh not like anything God. to do with Beverly Hills 90210. It's, it's, the, it's whatever, the black mark in her you career, know. whatever, however she looks at it, but... It is. She is so fucking good as Laura red, King. Red, red flag girlfriend. Red flag. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> She's so. You just know the her. Face, you never the, should have gone into that set. <laughs> the face that she makes when he's when it's not good news. That I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> It's, and, and I is fabulous. In that. He's breaking it. He's breaking it off with her, and her reactions to stuff are just incredible. She was, and, and gentlemen, how cool is it that that's happening? And in the background, playing without any hesitation, is I heard it through the grapevine. Oh, uh, of course, man. Yeah, hey, um, she lives in uh, New Orleans. She lives. In New Orleans. She does. Maybe we can get. Um, get Caitlin, Caitlin Ryan, uh, Ryan to go down there and knock on her fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like what's that? Crew party and, and David, yeah. they, had, they, they had costume. problems there in New Orleans this year. Oh, at Mardi Gras? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's America, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, here are the two different versions of Take Back the Night, the two versions of their stories of what happened. More Laura Kingman here. And he pushed me back onto the bed. I tried to get him to stop, but he wouldn't. And I, I tried to push him off, but he, he was too heavy. I begged him to stop. Finally, I just said, if you're going to do this, please at least use a condom. You know how it works. But the insane thing about it is I didn't even think we were going to go all the way until she pulls a condom out of her own purse. What is that? She was into it. Believe me, she was into it. So, uh... You know, written by men, of course. So, oh yeah, Larry, do you want to talk about that or shine up? No, I, no I, I'm just learning this, Chuck. I'm learning this. Oh, uh, you don't know this, Chuck. Before we came on the air, I informed Larry that on the other podcast with two actresses from Beverly Hills 90210, that they have come down a little bit on Larry about some of his male-oriented writing. So uh, Sherry Weiss pointed out that I should ask Larry about this. Does he feel that that was the case, um, which I asked Larry in the beginning, Mike, was Mike. not going to bring it up, but you brought it up. So, what 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 is your thoughts on this? And I'll comment too at a certain point. Mm -hmm. Larry. Go ahead, Larry. I, I have no. I mean, look what look the, the work is the work. It's all in the haze in the barn. There's nothing to really say. I got nothing at stake. It, it, people like it, you know. We're all watching it still. And you're talking about it. It's fine. I, it's good. Uh, look, I you know. I worked in wrestling. I understand what heels are. You, you're doing a little bit of throwing some shade. It's fine. You're cutting a promo. <laughs> cutting a promo. I what else are they going to talk about? You know, have we um, been? Have we know, been? Maybe, maybe they're mad because you know I always was. You know, a a, a Dylan Brenda guy. You know, maybe that's what that is true. Fine. Maybe that's maybe, maybe that. that is. I've been, been on Kelly's been on mind. record as that, and that might be hurtful to uh, the person to playing Kelly. <laughs> I don't know. She I don't will, know. She will not be named. Uh, Chuck, you had a thought. Yeah, I'm just stunned about the with the direction of this conversation. Oh, I didn't know it was going there either. I talked with the. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. I'm, I'm a little stunned. No, I mean, this. yeah, we wrote what we wrote. Look, it's in the bag. It doesn't, you know, you can look but at it. But I, way. Don't, I, um, 
No, I was agree. The point was is that that's exactly right. I mean, the idea was is that the show wasn't. We didn't. We by the time Larry came onto the show, we had seven out of ten young women between the ages of 14 and 21 watching our TV show. We didn't need any help getting girls to watch our TV show. We needed help getting a bigger guy to right. in. That's yeah. right. You need That's to broaden that. the demo. And that was, you know, I mean, the strength of Chip came into being, came into play, and Larry joined us. And you know, and to Richard Gollins too. He was an all-purpose writer. And that was the writer, the other writer that they have taken issue with as well. It's Richard Gollins. What a gay, they don't like a gay guy? Is that <laughs> no, no, no? They say it's male. In peace. Um, yeah. Oh come uh, on! He was he, that that they don't, they actually. Uh, that's an interesting critique, but they should have uh, someone on there to, to challenge it because it's wrong. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's something that they said. It's fair that we respond to it. So, I, you know, the works. I mean, we love them here. We I think that they're fantastic it. and all that stuff. But I, I love what they did. I'm, I have no yeah, I'm fine them. with it. Yeah, yeah. And Richard, I, I liked Richard. You know, I, hey, by the way, the difference between uh, Tori and, and Jenny and me is I fired Richard. But I, I liked him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where, where are we in the no, Steve? Uh, in I the never Steve know when one of those things are just going to come out. Of <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> there you let, go. Let's go back to the many loves of Steve because we, yeah. we, we no no we're only blowing the whole Celeste thing. No, yeah, wait. I wanted to. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, I was going to also point out that you know you guys had Jessica Klein, you had had Amy Spees write for the show, so there were female voices in the room uh, a lot through the making of Nine Hundred Two One Out. Well, also let's not forget the one who had as much influence as as anyone in those rooms was Karen, and Ka I was going to say and Karen Rosen as well. So. Yep. Okay, let's look at uh, this. And he's really tall. <laughs> he's really good looking, <laughs> and he's really hot. Really. Hi, Stevie. Oh, John. <laughs> Now. So there's that. I mean, obviously, we know that he did eventually break up with uh, Celeste. I did not put that clip in here. We've watched that multiple times already on this show. Um, and, but that is sort of the the payback of uh, John Sears and all of that and Celeste's return. But it's indicated in this episode that they have rekindled because where we're going to go is like that Celeste and Steve have rekindled because at the start of the next season, there is all this conversation about, uh, about Larry Nolan and uh, Rudy. That's right. Well, they're not there yet on that other show. <laughs> they're only on season four. Here, here, here's, here's where we go. Action on the beach. Well, that was July. And what about August? In August, she gave me the big aloha. Damn. Yeah. We were snorkeling in Kapalua Bay one day, and we literally swam into some guy she knew from high school. It turns out he was a great lost love of her life. I'm sorry. I know you kind of had your sights set on her for the long haul. Maybe it was for the best. In fact, I don't think the timing could have been better. Could have been. Really? Yeah. You know, after she bailed, I'd go out to the driving range, knock out a couple buckets, and there I'd be, overlooking the ocean, trade winds blowing in my face, everything smelling all fresh and tropical. And all I could think about were all the failed relationships I've been in. Uh, Steve, don't get down on yourself, man. You'll find the right girl someday. I know. I already have. Yeah? Yeah, there's only one girl who matters to me. We both know who she is. We do? Kelly. Kelly Taylor? Kelly is the great love of my life. I'm going to do everything in my power to win her over, and you got to help me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good part. I mean, that's, All right, that's, good break. That's, that's good vertical integration of the main characters. I love that, man. And it's like, you know, you're thinking of, I'm sure this is the first episode of that season. You, we end up on this thing where Celeste and Steve may or may not be seeing each other. It's perfect that all of a sudden now Kelly and Brandon have been dating and not telling anybody or whatever. And now here we have, you know, Steve being really into her. So I think that's great. Great stuff. 
I showed the mud. We showed we showed that. Um, 15 and then well the next big relationship is well there is l which i did not pull the clip from uh do you want to talk about l the the just it was a joke the trans it has gender age well in this world of uh you know you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but uh yeah we had a a woman uh play a man playing a woman yeah yeah. Right. You had a woman playing a transgender. A man, it's a person. Like a woman, yeah. Yeah. Uh, being a woman, yeah. yeah. Ahead of our time again. Yeah, there we were. We, and, we, and, and we brought, and we, the and we, we brought her back. Chuck, Chuck, we brought her back, and uh, Chancellor Arnold sits next to her at an awards dinner and, and spikes up a little relationship with her. Like he was, he has another date with her. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a big point of contention between Steve and Claire. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. want to see some comments yeah. here. Let's see what people said. Uh, uh, our friend Kristen McIsaac says, and what you wrote, Larry, was perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you. Yes. Uh, Catherine Rest says, give me a break. It's a 90s show that was ahead of its time. The show is 30 years old. There you go, Catherine. Thank you for that comment um and our friend brian navarro who we met in las vegas brian. says oh my god i'm texting caitlin to look for tracy so there you go, there <laughs> you go brian. tiffany says i always love listening to larry talk about the characters i feel like he generally cares about them and the storytelling in a tv show there has to be different points of view or it would be boring also there are so many episodes i have learned so much about what goes into tv writing and storytelling from this podcast it sounds like endless work well, yeah. well there you go that but and it is it's a privilege uh and it's, uh, me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it always felt like a privilege to write that show it really did Okay, and the and you and the actors should be uh, so thankful for the work. They, you know? they're, they're working. They're making some money. Yeah, as as Ian says, the gift that keeps on giving. No doubt, and I'm sure that they are. And the, the podcast is a place where they get to sound off on what not, and it's just all in fun. Now, Ian, is he going to be in Connecticut? Ian was there. Oh yeah, so everybody, you guys got to go check that out. March sixteenth, we won't be there, but uh, the nineties podcast, the nineties podcast, the nineties, what is it? Con convention yeah. is going to have Ian, Jason, uh, Shannon, Shannon. Shannon, Shannon, Shannon. But Shannon is not in that yeah. panel. Shannon well, is in a different panel. I don't know. And, and then J- Tori, Jenny. Jenny. Rebecca Gayhart, which is so dope, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I would yeah. go there just to meet her, you know. Uh, and Ian, we said Ian, Ian, Jason, yeah, all kind of came together. Yeah. And Shannon, uh, is with you said she's with the charmed panel, yeah. There you go, free plug for the 90s con. I hope yeah. you guys, <laughs> and then the, the other con, uh, which is the Fab Five folks, I have one in Charleston in uh, September, I think September 15th to 16th or 17th, and we're thinking about maybe going there. A lot of people are going, Jason. We will be involved. And I should tell everybody that we have, I, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I have touched touched base with the 90s con people and we're going to think of things that we can do together. So that is that is in the that has happened. And also, like Larry said, there's something going on in South Carolina in case you can't make it to uh, with our buddy Ryan and uh, John Sears, right? Joe Addison and I yeah. and, J- and Jason. Right, so there's a lot going on with 90210. Yeah, and it's a great city, Charleston, so that, that's the moment. There is um, the two big relationships we have to talk about, but uh, there is this thing with um, Valerie. And all I could think about were all the failed relationships I've been in. Uh, Steve, don't get down on yourself, man. Maybe this is not the clip. the right girl? No, so this, is not, this is the end of the other clip. Yeah, it says Val. Yeah, hold up. Yeah, I got absolutely. it here, guys. I got it. Val said Val in the clip. I mean, <laughs> you can always count on me to fuck something up in in a clip oriented episode. So uh, that is not here. But anyway, there is this thing where he gets together with Valerie. It, when Valerie first comes into town, there is a scene where Steve and Valerie almost make out because uh, he wants to take her out on the town. And they are in the car, and Brandon. Oh yeah, it's a convertible. And there is a little bit of play with um, Steve and Valerie when she first gets into town, right? 
Oh yeah. Yes. And she teases the hell out of him. And you know, I mean, he thinks it's, he thinks the relationship is one place and she has no interest at all. Uh, Cause she's interested in Dylan at that point. That's right. Oh. And she's, she goes down that road to try to find. Oh, no, 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 no. She doesn't know Dylan is at that point. Right. But she does. Oh, before the, yeah. I'm at a couple episodes in. Yeah. The, in, the, in, the, in the first episode, she just, you know, Steve's, uh, you know, just doing his Beverly Hills thing. Oh, okay. An avocado card. head, whatever you, however yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he just, he just represents that. But, but, but Larry does say happens because then Dylan and Valerie start hooking up. Dylan doesn't know who Valerie is. And Steve, she's also kind of seeing Steve at the same time, though she's not really seeing Steve. She's just kind of hooking up with Steve. And then even she's Dylan leading, is leading him on. She's to leading him totally on. leading him on. And then, you know, and then there's the whole thing that Dylan and Steve even have a little bit of. Oh, is that, is that where the punch comes in? No, no, but I think Dylan and Steve have an issue over it. Yes, that's, where they, that's where the punch comes. That's in. right. Yes, and when they had an issue at the, I remember at the Peach Pit, they were talking about you know mm -hmm. Steve has been now knows that Valerie and Steve have been sort of seeing each other. Dylan knows that, and there's some conflict there. Another mini triangle. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, Catherine West says that she definitely plays Steve and Dylan. Maggie thinks Val was straight to the point. He wasn't used to that. Yeah. Okay. Then there's Claire Arnold. Yeah, we have the Unreal World episode. I just realized they kind of we kind of do a foreshadow with. Well, that, that that's what He's I wanted to, to ask you about. She's trying to make David jealous. Now, of course, I think Claire Arnold is amazing and the most the best thing about nine hundred two one zero. Just to get that speak, art, to that, speak to that a bit. Just, just, just to get that off my chest in case I haven't said that. And uh, but there is this scene. I'm, I just put like a few scenes of him and Claire together. They continued on with this, Chuck, after you left. And here are some of the Steve and Claire moments. Boy, you should be loosening up at parties. During the day, I'm just a neurotic, insecure mess. But at night, when the glasses come off, look out. I feel like that you may have grabbed uh, <laughs> Clara's real life journal. Because that's like, I feel like that's pretty spot on. Tender heart. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, uh, a little while ago, she's uh, she's sitting over there. Oh, this is uh, season six. <laughs> this is like computer dating. Or so. <laughs> you crank this up. Wait, so that is computer that dating. Computer they they dating. both early, early computer dating. Brilliant <laughs> stuff. They both are signed up for the same. I don't know what it's bum bumble. Chat bumble. board, <laughs> board men seeking yeah. women, whatever you know. Yeah, it was like early. Uh, you were early board. on that. I mean, you, you brought that into us with the, the Rolling okay. Stones and a few. Oh yeah, other yeah, that was. That's great. right. That's right. Well, all that was happening. <laughs> you know, all of that was happening. I was on a message for board. An episode. Good. Good job. Good luck. All right, and here they are. It gets so hot this in this scene. Yeah, I had to be there for a second. Oh. Where are they? You no, know, I've been thinking. That night in the hotel room? Yeah, me too. Claire, it's not like uh, I'm not attracted to you. I am. And I'm attracted to you, too. I just don't think we'd work as a couple. No, I mean, you're a typical male chauvinist frat guy and you're a self-righteous stuck-up snob we'd hate each other i hate you now not as much as i hate you you wanna uh -huh. yeah you never asked give me he should have thanked us oh my ten. god that's for 10 of kissing you know, I, I mean this listen that is good stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do have good on-screen chemistry. I can yeah. say that. Yeah, and the, that must have been, so that was season six, I guess. That was season that six. was season six. Thank you for all that, Larry. Halloween, it was Halloween. very good for me to see Claire in all of those types of scenarios. I really wow. greatly appreciate she that. Like, she was addressed as a genie from my dream of genie. That's right. And the thing is, I've said to you, said times. Campbell? 
the more I was starting to like Claire Arnold, the character, I realized that now that I was liking Larry Mullen <laughs> <laughs> and, Chuck. And, Chip, and Chuck, cause you put all the words in her mouth. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I think that's the really, those are the big relationships that we have to talk about. After you guys left, there is of course, Hillary Swank comes into the show and Steve has a relationship with her. And does she have a child? Does she have a child? She has a child that oh we've had Zach, Zach you know, on the show. These are show killers. How he was a young, just, he was a young, oh young tw- eight to 10, but uh, it didn't work out with, with her on the show. Um, and that, that ended quickly. I will play one last clip of the person that he winds up with because only because it ended up uh, being such a big deal in the series. I very rarely think i shouldn't say very i don't really think that they always get it right at the last two seasons but i do think that they get uh this one right i steve take you janet to be my wife to be my wife and i promise before god and these witnesses before god and these witnesses do you mind if i take it from here Janet, I swear in front of the people who mean the most to me to love you for the rest of my life. You have given me so much to be thankful for. For you. For our family. I will fill our lives with love and devotion. And in these arms, you will always have shelter. And in my heart, you will always have a home. You have showed me the true meaning of partnership and help make me a better person. Oh my gosh, <laughs> me too. You go. It, I'm sounds in like the... it sounds like it was written by Chat GBT. Hey, um, yeah, Pete, Pete. Uh, yeah, like, he must <laughs> have paid someone for that. He didn't have me here. <laughs> stop. For about 20 seconds. Of that. <laughs> really, I, I wait, the wait, way stop, there. guys. Listen, uh, I, the, the writing aside, the actress who we've met, you guys met on the on that dual podcast, Lindsay Price. Oh, it, we should go out for a drink or something. Or it's a been... football game or dinner, but this uh, was, was painful. <laughs> yeah, and why was no one else dressed up? Why would they be the only one oh, dressed okay. up? Oh, okay, hold, hold, hold up. I, 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 and I'm sorry to say this. Listen, I, I, just, I don't mean to offend anybody about it, but one of the things about the, the Walsh family part of the show was it's... we were made to these people were Scotch Irish and we wrote them as they were Jew- as they were Jewish family because we were Jewish writers. <laughs> we knew how to do that. That was the most fucking goyish moment. My mom think like who did he pay to write this thing? Oh, on the prairie. The nostalgic oh pod blast oh that has jumped the shark <laughs> moment. Why would he and I could just see uh Okay. No, I, oh I'm sorry. I'm not, I was not down with I that. Feel, that was upsetting. Like that was the so actress, I was just I Lindsay Price is fin- is We're phenomenal. Done. I we'll I'm, I'm sure later. Lindsay. We've seen her before. Yeah. We we love Lindsay. I you know I can't be responsible. Yeah. But Chuck, before you leave, somebody wrote this. Oh. He that Steve had the best character development of everyone on the show. Do you agree <laughs> with? <laughs> do you agree with that? Well, I. I can only comment, you know, for one to five, but in one to five, yeah, there was development there. But the other thing is, is that because we used him as comic relief a lot, the one thing about comedy, and this is the kind of the secret of comedy is your characters don't change. Mm. I mean, that's what you want. I, I, I believe that too. I think we were, but in a way he, uh, he became more sensitive and more open and, and, uh, and his you fears your, more, and more vulnerable. Your, it became more vulnerable. I guess. Yeah. You lose your comedy. So you don't really do. So in that, we didn't try to develop him all that much, but there was an, always a natural development. And I think in season five, we really set him up to be in that path of that and with things with the relationships with the father and Keg. But, you know, in terms of the romance is what we were talking about today. Larry, do you feel that you had him a couple of more seasons? Do you feel that you were able to do that with his character as well? I, I think, you know, I think, and, and hi, Crystal, I think, you know, in a, in a way it's satisfying because he's, he, his, 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 his changes are so incremental, the small, but there really are changes because by the end, you know, having to go through the breakup, the different breakups and having the relationship with Claire and being really challenged all along the way, I, I think he, he does, he does grow a bit. But again, as Chuck says, 
we didn't want to, ch- you don't want to change that character and then become something else. And maybe perhaps that's why the problem was with the Hillary Swank thing. All of a sudden now he's in a very, he's like, he's like Jesse uh, Vasquez. He's like married to a woman with a kid. I mean, it's like, right. It's like it, it, you can't win for losing on that. That, that wasn't, yeah, there was nowhere to go with that. And a show like this for this long and it just, it just was too bad. I mean, they just, you know, they tried. They, I think, you know, their mandate was to change the show. I remember that's what I would heard. How much they wanted to change. The Holly show. says nine hundred two one zero is done for me when Larry and Chuck left. <laughs> so there you, you go. Know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, that's very nice to say. I, they, I, they thought they could change it. They, you know, they did. You know what Chuck did was take it from high school to college, which is a my, change. So to go from college to the real world, you know, it could have been done, but you have to stay with the template, man. <laughs> I will that's, say that's that's don't make don't make them ordinary. You know they're extraordinary lives. Uh, just want to say that Lindsay Price was really great and did did bring a lot of great out of Ian Ziering, the actor. The two actors together in those last two seasons. Maybe that the writing wasn't where you would want what what wanted it to be, but they she really the two of them really did have great on screen chemistry. And I would say that it was the best for him. If you two, if other writers, if you want to argue that point, wrote it differently, maybe it would have been a little bit better, but there was something very special about the, that, that, that relationship, especially with Janet herself and, and all that. So I'm just going to stand up for season 10. She did not, they had a kid. They got they, married and they, oh, they had, had a kid, kid too. Oh they had gosh. a kid. To, they, never <laughs> Jesus. they took the, they cut the balls out of this. This is so quickly, Larry. <laughs> Season they, ten. And then they became boring. I mean, it's, it's, this you know, is really. Let's cut Brandon's balls. You know, you know, balls. You know it, okay, look, if, if, if it, I would have had Steve when he gives okay, exactly. You know, but this is season wedding, ten. The wedding, scene, set, right the wedding right scene should have been Steve set. giving that whole speech, and then we pulled back, and he's wearing no pants. Okay, that's what it should have been. I mean, what? Uh, season 10, so season 10 though, this, they had to wrap this stuff up. Steve needed to get married. He needed to have a baby. You, you know what I mean? Uh, oh Dylan and, and Kelly were together. It's, I, you know, I have to That's tell you. fine, but Pete, I'm going to just tell you, you now got, you know, we now have seen this. <laughs> I've had to watch this. Yes, so I'm so sorry. Tell you that when you put that on a clip of uh, 8, 9, and 10, and I'm on the watching it with you. <laughs> Don't expect me to be there. Okay, I, wait, I, I just want to say wait. we are getting such a reaction from people that love how you're reacting <laughs> to, to to that clip. You know, I imagine you know, these are the fans. They understand. Look it, and when you get to be, you know, an elderly, you know, dude, you realize there's only so much time. <laughs> how much time are you going to spend doing what you're going to be spending? Right. I'm not going to spend any of it. With Watching months. season end, I, I got you. <laughs> okay, that, let's you know. end on a let's end on a positive note. Our friend Chan says, "Happy International Women's Day to the ladies here." Uh, seems like a perfect thing to say, and to Karen yeah. and and our and our friend Jessica Klein as well, who were uh, and Amy Spees, who all wrote for the show as well. Mention those names, uh, and Bethany Rooney, and all the great directors and actresses that came along uh, the pathway of nine hundred two one zero. So this has been great, guys. Uh, let's do more characters and some music down the line because we're. I had a lot of fun looking at this today. Okay. All right. Too many loves and his crushes. All right. All right. See you all everybody. next week. See you around. Bye.